Good kitten internet. Isun's way prettier than I am, so I'll record him for a moment or two. Although he keeps wanting to sniff the camera. He knows where it's at. I have run out of ideas for Vita at the moment, uh, mostly because I don't have a huge amount of time Friday and Saturday nights. So I looked online for various, hey, look, here's a uh, topic idea for every day of the month for Vita type of thing. And one of the things that came up were travels. Um, what is the favorite country that you have ever traveled to? So I'm not quite doing that, but I'm going to cover it all. I've done quite a bit of traveling. Uh, maybe not as much as several other people. Oh, uh, behind me is my housemate's stuff. He's not here at the moment, so I'm recording in the living room instead of my family room. So uh, countries I've visited, I'll have a map up, say, now with a highlight of all of the countries that I've visited, not counting airports. Maybe I'll make the airports a different color. Anyway, I have visited several countries at this point. Uh, the first country I ever visited outside of my home country of the United States would be Norway. That's not much of a surprise, given that my partner lives in Norway. Uh, I have visited, in order, Norway, Austria, uh, let's see. From there would be, let's see, Norway, Austria, Australia, Sweden, Canada, United States. Uh, and in the U.S., I have visited pretty much every state east of the Mississippi and some of the states straddling the Mississippi. And in a few weeks, I will actually be visiting California uh, for a work trip. I've, yeah, that was a really short topic idea, wasn't it? Hmm. Let me go look up another one. And yes, I have cat trees in pretty much every room of the house, including rooms that I don't actually live in. Yeah, I can't come up with anything else, so I'll talk a little bit about the various countries I've visited. Uh, as I mentioned before, Norway, that's where my partner lives. I have visited there four times now, I think. I'd have to take a look at my passports or... Just go back memory-wise, but I have visited my partner a few times. Um, Oslo, Bergen, middle of nowhere, uh, Thurda. Yeah, I think those are mostly the places I've visited. I don't think I've really been to too many other places in Norway. Uh, Sweden, I visited for my first sabbatical. So sabbatical in my case, my company gives a sabbatical, which is a many expenses paid trip to a country that you've never visited before every five years. Or I should say you have four weeks every five years, and you can take either one or two trips for those four weeks. So either I can take one four-week trip or two two-week trips. And I took the two two-week trips. So my first sabbatical was to Sweden, mostly because that was very close to Norway, so it's much easier for my partner to come with me. Sweden was very nice. I liked most of it. Uh, the sabbatical itself was very stressful for me due to mental situation at the time and so on, but that didn't really have anything to do with the trip for the most part. Uh, Austria, that was during spring break while I was in college. I had taken a class that was Castles, Cathedrals, and Culture, where you visit various foreign countries, or not various foreign countries, but the point of the class was it was an honors class that you visited castles, cathedrals, and culture inside of Austria during spring break, and studying, doing, uh, learning a bit of German. Um, my German is terrible. Uh, I know I've told the tale of my infamous translating between too many languages at once. Let me move where I have less reflection on my glasses. In fact, let me just take off the glasses. That would help. Uh, let's see. So Austria, I was there for a week. Uh, I should mention, my foreign language skills are abysmal for speech purposes. I'm not that bad at reading and understanding. Um, when I'm visiting Norway, I can generally... By the time I'm leaving, which I'm usually there for two weeks roughly, unfortunately, I can generally understand about a quarter of what people are saying. Less in some of the more rural areas, more in some of the urban areas. Um, Sweden, I was able to understand about 30% by the time I was done, but I had taken some classes ahead of time, so I knew a bit, and also had watched regular ordinary Swedish mealtime, which, oddly enough, probably taught me more Swedish than anything else. Uh, 
in Austria, I had taken some German. Uh, Australia, they speak English. I can understand English. Uh, so I was there for a work trip. I was helping set up a training facility, basically. So I got to be in Australia for about a week. Unfortunately, I couldn't take any vacation for various reasons. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've talked about the Australian trips before, too. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that, and I found out I don't get jet lag in that direction. That's very nice. And then most recently, for new countries for me, was my Canadian trip. I went to Newfoundland, specifically St. John's area, and also to... Uh, uh, tired Nova Scotia, uh, specifically Halifax. Halifax would have been a lot more fun if both myself and my partner had not been sick at the time. Newf and St. John's was quite nice and beautiful, and my partner was sick, unfortunately, so they weren't able to under really enjoy as much of it as I was hoping. And the border control people in Toronto were dicks. Lots and lots of dicks. But poutine. Okay, I've probably talked enough. I am I have some better ideas for the weekend just because I'm going to have more time to prepare, but I want to make sure I'm vlogging today. And, well, it's vlog every day in April. And so, one thing I wanted to point out, board games, these are my housemates' board games, and board games, those are mine. Or uh, a couple of my friends are storing their board games here too, but they're my board games. I might as well briefly cover that. This area is a bit of a mess because of all the crap in front of it, but these are my various board games, with a couple of exceptions. Puerto Rico is not mine. It's my friend Carl's. Uh, Dominion, which is there and the entire bottom shelf. That is not mine. That is my friend Seth's. And where did it go? Power Grid, which is there. That is not mine. That is my friend John's, although I'm the one that owns the expansions. All the rest of these are mine. Um, the clear box is Seven Wonders with some fan expansions. Uh, Red Dragon Inn, that is all of Red Dragon Inn that has been released to date. Uh, Blood Rage and Midgard are actually made by the same people and are effectively the same game with different mechanics. So it's rather interesting. Going up, we have Istanbul, Syro, Eternal Dynasty is a fairly uncommon game. It's a uh, Warring Three Kingdoms period, as in China's Warring Three Kingdoms period game. I don't get to play it very often. I like the game, but it's yeah, it's a little weird on mechanics. Small World Underground is a aggressive multiplayer game. It's fairly simple. Chicago Express is a stupidly cutthroat um, train building game that we've played often enough where we basically had near perfect strategies for a while. Exploding Kittens is a casual game that I haven't really played much of. Now uh, let me turn on the light so it's a little bit better quality. There we go. That's a bit better. So this top shelf here are all cooperative games. So Dead of Winter is a cooperative game with a trader mechanic. Potential trader mechanic. We actually play it without the trader. Betrayal at House on the Hill is a board game with a random trader mechanic. XCOM the board game is a real-time board game that interfaces with a an Android application, or really just a web component of some variety. It's an interesting cooperative game, but very hard. Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror is more similar to Magic the Gathering than anything else mechanics-wise, but it's a card game cooperative game. Um, when you only have one set of Arkham Horror, it's only two-player. Rolf and Wizard School were both games that were produced by Hank Green, um, or published by Hank Green, I should say. Rolf is a game that I haven't really played any of yet. It's a party game. Uh, Wizard School is a... Uh, Rolf should really not be there. Rolf should be on a different shelf. Uh, Wizard School is a cooperative game. that The mechanics are very unbalanced, which is unfortunate because I really like the art. Pandemic. Um, these are two of the boxes. I actually have all of the regular Pandemic Plus expansions. I don't actually have any of the... Uh, what should we call it? Yeah. Um, I don't have the unique types of Pandemic. My housemate does. Um, so Pandemic is a game where you're cooperative trying to... Uh, you are the CDC trying to make sure that people don't die. Uh, Zombicide, it's a game that I picked up because I couldn't get the game that I wanted, which was actually Dead of Winter. This is the expansion box. I have both in there. Um, Zombicide is basically a tacticals minigame. A Touch of Evil 
is effectively a Sleepy Hollow ripoff version of Arkham Horror. City Hall is SimCity, the board game. It's not cooperative. It's worker placement-ish, basically. Eminent Domain is a card game that's probably the most similar to Puerto Rico. That game over there. And, well, you play to capture planets and so on. Nuns on the Run is a young adult board game that's kind of like a reverse clue, sort of. It's not quite... It's... It's a game that it's um, everybody on one player, or versus one player. I can describe it later if people care. Castles of Burgundy is a very well, highly recommended game that's all about building up your estate. Alhambra is another game that's about building up your estate. That's why they're next to each other, actually. Uh, that's a special edition version of Alhambra, but I don't have any expansions. Five Tribes, it's a game that's a worker pickup game, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Ignoring Dominion. Um, Lords of Waterdeep with the expansion is actually one of my favorite worker placement games and nobody wants to play it because everybody prefers other ones. Captains of Industry is Capitalism the board game where you are encouraged to go super cutthroat, rip everybody off on existence, especially on food. And people wonder why I'm socialist. Uh, Takedo is a board game made by the same makers as, uh, the same creator as Seven Wonders. It's a game of paths and journeys, where the goal is to have the most enlightening journey. Takedo, also made by the same publisher, is about feeding pandas. Infiltration is a card game that's set in the universe of, uh, what is, um, Netrunner, I think it was. And it's a game that I don't really play very often. Down there are a bunch of games that I basically never play. And maybe I'll go over them at some point. Oh, I should probably actually explain what some of these games are. I forgot to mention. Istanbul is a game where you send your workers out to go collect things. And the goal is to have a certain number of gems, which triggers game end. Suro is the game of paths. This is the Suro of the Seas, which is the second version of Suro. It's an incredibly quick game, depending on if you're playing original Suro or... Sewer of the Seas. Sewer of the Seas has a random element. Eternal Dynasty, I already mentioned. It's a four, uh, Three Kingdoms-based game. And yeah, that's about it. Board games, woo. Well, this loaf of a kitty is here to say goodnight. Is that right, Isim? You are quite the cute Isim loaf. So, good night, Internet. I will talk to you tomorrow. Maybe YouTube will actually upload this video properly, unlike the constant retries I keep having to do. Woo.